Hey folks, come on, let's tell the truth tonight. You're driving better cars than you've ever driven. You're living in bigger houses than you've ever lived in. You're doing better than you've ever done. Then why is our shout becoming less and less when it should be more and more and more and more and more? Turn around to somebody and say, you got more to shout about tonight than you've ever had in your life. We shouldn't be doing it less. We should be doing it more. When you have to come to church late to get a front row seat, if this was a rock concert, they'd be lying. Not only that, there'd be folks after you had your nice seat would walk down that aisle with a long chair. They don't care what time you got there. They don't care how long you've been waiting. If there's room, they'd bring their long chair and get in front of you because they want to be where the power's at. We need revival when you want to move further back, further back. Further back, further back. We need revival. When our saints play multiple choice with a church's schedule of services, we need revival. You know, like, which one are we going to go to? Sunday morning or Sunday night? I'm here to preach to you tonight. When kids ask parents, are we going to church today? We need revival. You want to know why there's a tabernacle of David? You want to know why David was such a shouter and a rejoicer in the presence of God? Because David said, I was glad when they said. If you get glad when they say it, how glad are you going to be when you get there? I've heard it all my life, my ministerial life. God can do more with a fool on fire than a scholar on ice. I want to ask you this question. What is wrong with the devil's worst nightmare being a scholar on fire? If you know more about God than anybody else, you ought to shout more than anybody else. If you've got a greater revelation, a greater illness, the word of God shouldn't kill you and it shouldn't bind you to your pew. It shouldn't lock you to your pew. He said his word was in him like fire. I've seen some folks, they won't act like anybody shouts is shallow. But the reason they don't shout is because they got the word so deep in them. You need to get a little deeper on down in your feet. 
Get it in your hands. Get it in your tongue. Get it in your dance. Get it in your emotion. We need revival. You may be seated. Say what you want to say. Cover yourself. Cop out. Camouflage. Justify. But if you got less joy now than you used to have, you need a revival. If you got less dance now than you used to have, you need a revival. If you've got less zeal now than you used to have, you need revival. See, the, the, the thing that I see is we used to preach revival and we quit preaching revival and now we preach evangelism. And that's why we can have a lot of people get the Holy Ghost on Sunday and no saints in the prayer room on Wednesday. Because it's evangelism without revival but the thing that will shake our world is when revival comes back to the apostolic church when our youth and those that are raised in our pews question our standards and they doubt our doctrine we don't need another seminar We need a revival. They don't need another syllabus. They need a hot hand of anointing on their head until they talk in tongues. Because holiness is not a guidebook, a rule book, or a legislation book. Holiness is the Holy One in us. When you get the Holy One in you. I've never seen anybody lie, steal, steal, cheat, murder, gamble, commit adultery, drink beer, run around with somebody else's wife while they're talking in tongues and dancing in church. There is a cooling off of conviction towards sin. We need revival. We need to get back to the place where we are more scared of sin than we are poison, a loaded gun, or arsenic poison, or anything else that might hurt us. If the church can get the fear of sin and the love for God through the power of the Holy Ghost, we can shake our world. Turn around your neighbor and say, I need a revival. I know you need a revival. Because as some of you a few years ago, I would never have got this far in the sermon without you running these aisles. The problem is we have too many folks preaching for us and not enough folks preaching to us. 